So just making this corner, I realize there is a black smudge and it's moving and my gun is not loaded. I'm going to give it like a 10. Hmm. It's really good. 14 minutes. Let me say that again. 14 minutes. 14 minute hiking, carrying all the bait. Yeah. 15 minute walk, so we got to carry all the bait in each time to get it going. And uh, we still haven't got anything else set up because we're not really sure if there's a bear here or not. Or a workable bear. This is kind of how animals travel, just for reference. There's a river down there, right? And they don't like to go up on top because they might get skylined. So what they do is they run halfway up and down. So this is what we saw when we were creek fishing last time. Like this would be a good spot to try to get a bear. So there's more of that trail right here. So naturally put uh, food on a path that an animal follows anyway, and you do it enough times and the bears will get trained that that's where food is. And then they'll come back. But a bear doesn't really like to come back to the same spot over and over again because it doesn't assume that food is going to appear in the same spot over and over again. So that's obviously the trick and risk when it comes to bear hunting. It doesn't look like it's it, huh? We don't want to invest too, too much into here unless we know there's a bear around. Because of how this hunt's set up, I really needed to be mobile. That's where the sponsor Natchez comes into play. Natchez is an online store. It's a competitor to the big box stores. It started by a couple of families. They specialize in excellent online customer service. You can get everything from hunting, camping, fishing, survival supplies. It's got practically everything. So what I was mostly keyed in on this time was getting a tree stand and tree sticks to be able to climb up the tree because we weren't sure exactly where we we're gonna set up the bear bait. We needed to be mobile. So that's where Natchez comes to play. Check out the link down in the description below. You can get everything. Before I'm at last orders, I got duck decoys. I got a foam decoy for shooting into. I also got tons of other things like you can get arrows, broadheads, camping supplies. It's literally got all outdoor gear that you could ever think of from head to toe. On my previous orders, I grabbed a salt lick, set that up for deer, so I'm all ready for the bow season and the gun season for deer. Really looking for this hunting season. I know you guys are too, so jump on the Natchez website and get everything that you guys need to get going on your outdoor adventures. Nothing came to visit. No, but something might have come and taken a sniff, right? <laughs> Maybe. I think a bear would do more than a sniff, but... You would expect so, yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. Check the camera and see what's up. So we got, uh, basically this is just leftover food bits. I think they will eat rotten stuff, but I don't think they prefer to eat rotten stuff. So this is leftover meats and things. And do you think a uh, bear wants some cheese? Probably. They're mammals, right? They wouldn't want cheese. So Ooh, there's your fish. Does it smell? It doesn't smell that bad. Not yet? No. Here, dump one of the fish out. Ew, Ew I gross. Touched, I touched the fish slime. Why is that gonna come out? Some mozzarella. This is from like 2005 or something. Oh yeah? Yeah, my mom had it. She's like... <laughs> Clear than the freezer, eh? Yeah. I would have made some cheese toppings with this. <laughs> some raspberries, strawberries that went bad. I'd eat that. Smelling good already. And then this was... Uh... That one doesn't look as good. No. <laughs> it's got jam in it though. Oh yum. Apple from my tree. Yeah. An onion. So you don't mind if I uh, make, no. some, make some holes in it? No, that'd be fine. Okay, we'll get this. We'll get the stink going. So if it rains, it'll stink more. I don't really smell this, so I'm not surprised the bear. If a bear hasn't found it yet, we haven't checked yet, but it doesn't smell that much. No. no. Well, I'll give it a couple days. So there's certainly enough humidity and heat. Yeah, if it rains again, it's going to start to go. It's an old camera. I don't use this anymore. They don't work that well. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say the brand of it or anything, but I'm going to tell you not to buy this brand. But I put it out here in the woods because if it gets stolen, it gets stolen. Because <laughs> we are in a place where it might get stolen. All right, there you go, spy point. Well, that fish is starting to smell, so I think more confident now. Put some holes in there, and uh, the flies are gonna get on it. And if it rains, it's gonna smell real good, real bad. Then after that, we just gotta keep in mind where we wanna put a tree stand. So we'll cut a 10 inch by 10 inch square. Okay. Put a couple of drainage holes in the bottom. Okay. Right. This is gonna go up against a tree. Yep. 
I'm gonna put a ratchet strap under the lip. Okay. Onto the tree, and then I'm gonna reach inside. I have like a two and a half inch bolt with a washer. So we'll just get my beep beep and beep into the tree. Okay. So my idea was to go a little bit higher on the hole. Yeah. So, so like you can get some fill. Up. Yeah. My thought was to go cut like that. Oh, I can actually draw in there a little bit. Like this, like that, like that. Okay. And then maybe a little bit of a relief. So then it's like a door. So like a bear, it's kind of raccoon proof. Oh. And a bear is going to have to really work on, like we can obviously pull it out a little bit to get it going. Yeah. And then the bear is going to have to really work in and then the raccoon's going to have to, he can't just stick his head in there and pull yeah. everything out, but the bear is going to have to like stick his hand in there very carefully and pull out little pieces yeah. and then spend lots and lots and lots of time there. Cause normally they would just get in there, eat like for five minutes or whatever. And well, I think the idea around having a small hole is that they can't and having it at the right height off the ground is they can't just stick their head in there. And yes. Eat or hi right. higher. They scoop it. So ratchet strap's good and you can go higher. So you go like four or five feet. Right, yeah. so if a bear has to stand up and then yeah. pull some stuff out and then it gets yeah. on the ground. Is that 10 square? It's 10 square. That high up, eh? Yeah. You're gonna make it hard for these bears. <laughs> Dude, bears will come break into your house for food. The bear will be able to push through that and um, pull food out. It's only a prototype, we'll, so we'll see if it works. Yeah. The cutting corners? Yep. Not exactly. That makes it but... sound like we're... The easy way out. And then the door. Cut a strip out. Yeah, here, cut right? the strip first. We'll see how bad. Scissors, knife. Right. Hold yeah. on. You were faster. It can work. It might work. Not well, but it's working. We get the wrist stuck in there. But... <laughs> maybe, it's like maybe. one of those uh, monkey fish traps. Monkey trap door, huh? Maybe it's going to be too sharp. It's just going to drive the bear nuts, right? Or a raccoon's going to force itself in, and then it won't be able to get out. <laughs> Well, that's okay. This is bear food. So Jeremy capitulated. We got the barrel now. We're committed. Pot committed now. That's new from like yesterday. Tree? Well, should we leave it here? Yeah. We'll make everybody walk in. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully there's a bear. <laughs> Maybe the bear came yesterday. I think if we keep at it, eventually something's going to show up. Yeah, big family raccoons. <laughs> well, it's something to eat anyway. We'll get the bait set up and cut some trees. And then so the next thing to do is wait for a bear. And then when the bear comes, then we'll put the tree stand up. And Jeremy said he can come bait every couple of days, two, three days. Yeah, I should be able to get some old pastries and things. So yeah, perfect. I brought uh, like popcorn is popcorn. Really I was going to ask you if you had some popcorn for today. So much popcorn. We should have filled it up before we left. Would have been light enough. To carry it all out. <laughs> it doesn't dry out. It'll carry scent for a long way. And it's not going to be like, well, the bear is going to get a big treat, but it's going to make a big scent. And then I got bear fat too, or bacon fat. Okay. Bear fat comes next. My mom cleaned out. She got pep pepper pepperoni, like really old pepperonis. Yeah. So I got a bag of meat as well. Well, I was hoping that we would have some action over here, but it looks like we don't. Again, everything looks undisturbed, so I'd be surprised if there's anything on the camera. Well, guys, sorry, my uh, battery ran out on the GoPro. So as I was saying, we need to, we want to set up over, well, we're not sure exactly. We want to pick our tree. The only problem with that one is there's going to be lots of uh, brush here that we're going to have to clear out like high up. Yeah. So one of the things we got to think about is our shot window on, on top of the hump. Oh, I guess it's, it could be below the hump too, right? 
yeah, depending on perspective. I thought that tree, that, like, we just have to cut out these two little these guys. These two. And it exposes that tree pretty well. Okay. Timber. Right on top of all of our stuff. Yep. My saw is about your saw. Okay. We can lift it and pull it back, and then that'll help it to fall. Yeah. Harder to budge than I thought. Yep. If you keep doing that, maybe I can shove it this way. Or maybe we can shove it this way. One, two, three. Again. It's going. Almost. Now it's in the sight line. Okay. Here it goes. Now it's not in the sight line. <laughs> so the only thing I'm concerned with is like once you get up high. Like every branch on these trees is going to be in the way. Head height, or do we want like slightly higher to make it a little bit we more want challenge? The bottom of the barrel at like okay down here, so, so that opening's like so he has to feet off the ground. He has to kind of reach up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. We don't want to bias against any little bears, huh? <laughs> like cubs? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. We do want to bias against them. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Oh, it's not as heavy as I thought. I don't know why I thought it was heavy. Okay, uh, pivot. Sure. We can always lower it if you don't like it. Or raise it also if you don't like it. That looks good. Well, now I have to stick my arm in your trap. <laughs> I'm going to open it for you. I can do one side. You got it? Okay. Oh! <laughs> Who made this this way? This, this part of the idea was yours. Oh! oh. <laughs> Should have pre drilled it. <laughs> and then you shoot him, right? When his hand is stuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is a good trap. <laughs> I'm really stuck. <still, laughs> my hand's really stuck. You might want to cut those off. So, what I was thinking is if he sticks his finger like that, right? Yeah. Cause that's about that's a good height. So bear's gonna go like this. Bear might have a bigger arm than you. Maybe, but maybe not. Put your like, put just go reach down. Yeah, yeah. I'm num num. So you, you just have to don't put it off. You have to learn not to do that. Maybe the bear's not smart. He's just gonna do this, and you have to work real hard. He's gonna have to be. Yeah. He's gonna have to be careful. It's gonna make it harder to throw bait in there too. Oh, I got lots of complaints about this design. <laughs> We're doing the breadcrumbs today. Yeah, we might as well throw in everything we've got, right? right? Since you have it. Oh, I don't know if you're going to like this trick, though. I was going to smear it all over the door and stuff. Right. So when the bear, like if you put it all over the edge, yeah. when the bear comes, he sticks his hand there and then he walks away and he draws all the other bears in because he's got like, peanut butter fingers. Oh, dude, this smells awesome now. Dude, I brought marshmallows too. Oh, yeah. Those, those smell like crazy. They smell for a long distance. You don't have the blessing of smell, so you don't know. But they smell. So hang those from the trees. The first time you bait, you make a mess. I'm not a bear baiting expert, by the way. <laughs> this is like... That guy keeps leaving all this good food behind. This is the juice, though. Look at this. Look at that, Jerry. Oh, look at all that meat. I don't know how much of this is going in there and how much of this is going around. Bacon fat on the tree. Oh yeah, that smells great. Which branch are you worried about? The big one near the top. Ah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna hunt in a windstorm. Well, you wouldn't hunt in a windstorm anyway. No. <laughs> no. I'm just gonna show you what kind of mess we made. Look at this mess. Then you step in it, and when you walk out, you bring that scent with you. We've got a ton of stuff in there. The marshmallows I'm going to put like, I'm going to break up a little bit, banana peel and some meat. The peanut butter is going to make lots of smell and scent everywhere. And then the only other thing to do is set up the game camera. We might have to move that tree to Cortiso. Yeah. Let's see if I can find the link down below. Those were sent to uh, Kevin from Modern Self Reliance. Okay. And he said, uh, you maybe use these more than me. And I'm like, yep, I probably will. <laughs>
So we're gonna use them now to blaze the trail out of here. Yep. It smells. Okay. I can smell Thank the peanut. For it. I smell the peanut butter. And then you left the fish over there. Maybe I'll grab the fish. So obviously this is where our old spot was. The flies are on it, which is handy. I'm probably just gonna throw it up here because when it rains, it's gonna get nice and moist. Got a banana peel. Has some s appeal. <laughs> My banana peel has some appeal. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so the only thing we don't have is the sponsorship for the show, the whole show, Natchez. But I did order a double, or two single hang-on stands and uh, steps. But uh, they're not here yet. So next best thing to do is obviously just to get everything else situated. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make our own trail out here. Because the game trail is back there, so that's where we're expecting the bear to come from. 19, 20, 21, 22. 22! That's a good distance. 22 yards. Perfect pot shot for a bow. It's just uh It's not working. Somebody designed a really odd kind of a door on this thing that's making it tricky. Is it you? He's the wooded beardsman. Oh. My, is my over-engineering. They're gonna go to somebody else's bait because they're gonna be like, this bait sucks. <laughs> so much work. <laughs> Why do you need a door? Why can't you just have like a little open space? Uh, ask the wooded beardsman. So she's asking why why we did it this way is because so that the bear has to like take his time, and then if he's there longer, then we can have a shot. That works pretty good. It's not that bad. Hey, Jeremy's gonna. Sorry. We'll see how long Jeremy can last on uh, baiting it that way. But uh, I've got a different. This is day. What are we day? We're day four or five. Yeah. Day four or five, something like that. We checked the camera. There's nothing on the camera. Not even a raccoon. And so uh, Jeremy's gonna take over here and then he's gonna let me know if and when there's a bear nearby and then I'll come up and start hunting. You feel confident? You thought, we thought something, there was gonna be something here today, but like, open. at least a raccoon, Yeah, but nothing. I think as soon as something starts, they'll be here daily. Cause yeah. there's so much food and- Not sure if you like that. I like that, I still like it. I still think it's gonna be like very annoying for a bear and they're gonna stay here a long well, time. I'm really interested to see the video when a bear does come to it, <laughs> how they react to that little door system. Yeah, well he's gonna be like, first he's gonna stick his hand all the way in there yeah. and then he's not gonna be able to pull it out and he's gonna have yeah. to learn that he has to do this yeah. very carefully, that's my yeah. guess. So the proof will be how the bear, how the bear reacts to it, yeah. exactly. We should put some pudding We here. should put some pudding here, maybe that'll help. Why don't you just give me the pudding? Why don't we just get you to be in charge of cooking for the bear? There you, you go. You could do pudding on Monday, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on Tuesday. This is better than the food we normally eat. Egg macaroni and cheese on <laughs> Why Wednesday. Why don't you give the bear the food that you make so that it can eat like roasted raccoon no. and we don't have to. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> Ooh, that was a lot of sass. Yeah, that's an extra <laughs> sass. I the think we should get pudding on. the camera's on. roasted raccoon, right? <laughs> we have, so yeah. it's not all that bad. Yeah, it is. We'll see if this footage makes their cut. I'm gonna fall. Oh, awesome. There, that's stinky. You smell it? Yeah, a little bit. Well, guys, I decided to come one more time. There's nothing on the trail camera still. Uh, obviously, nothing's been disturbed up top here. We've got a pretty good mess of stuff happening up top, with some scents. And uh, I made a concoction out of uh, some old minnows we were gonna use for bait. So we're gonna try to do a little bit of a stink bait here. Get some of that juice flowing there. Oh, there we go. And then every time it rains, it should uh, reactivate. And then that, I'm just gonna leave up top here. I don't like leaving garbage in the woods, so we will pick this up. We gotta get uh, the animals accustomed to things happening here. That's just gonna bake in the sun. What else can we do? Hopefully that works. Well, let me tell you guys, it's been a long journey to try to get this bear bait going, but it was a challenge you wanted to take. We did it all on foot. I know you guys are gonna have mixed feelings about bear baiting, but let me tell you, we put on about 30 kilometers worth of walking with heavy, heavy stuff to get this bear bait going. And of course, you guys are probably interested in how this bear is gonna react to the bait and how we did it. Normally, as said, we do uh, just a small 10 inch square and the bear can just grab whatever it wants. But we raised it up for a couple of reasons. We wanted it so that the bear would be in a good position when we come to the shot. That front arm will be out of the way, exposing the vitals, and you're not gonna be into bone. Now, Jeremy was concerned about the flaps and how annoyed the bear would be. I'd say, from looking at this footage, the bear is more annoyed by the fact that the bait is off the ground. You can see a couple of times where it tries to pull it down. 
and the cub is obviously disinterested because it can't actually reach the bait you can see it wrenching on the flaps and trying to pull it out of the way and the camera didn't get the first first impressions you can see that the uh, stink baits down on the ground so we did miss a few impressions but that's how this camera happens to go and the bear over the course of the day comes and visits a few more times so the bear now knows where the food is and won't forget so the trick now is just to keep it going keep the bear interested and like i said this was a ton of work and we wanted to do it on foot we got exercise of walking in and if we were hunting this bear in this forest we never would have seen it because it's super super dense so this is really the only way we could hunt bears in northern Ontario. Otherwise, you're just never going to see them. And habitually, the bears are nocturnal or at least crepuscular. So you're only going to see them in low light. And like I said, not in this dense forest. Baiting is really the only way to go. I want to add too that bear baiting is legal where I am and also highly ethical. Reason being because the bear has a choice to go to the bear, the bear bait or not. And uh, just like a fish has the decision if it's going to take the bait or not. So this gives us the opportunity to decide which bears we want to hunt and have them out in daylight. Otherwise, like I said, they're completely nocturnal and the population is going to get way too out of hand. So now that we had a bear coming in, I wanted to get right on it because uh, I've done some reading and it said that, you know, bears typically will stay on the bait for about 10 days and then after that it's hard to keep them they'll, they'll start to wander around it's really hard to keep the bear around for 30 days so i got my 270 uh, browning all sighted in uh, the reason is because the shot was only about 22 yards and i'm pretty sure i sighted my gun in for like over 50 to 75 yards so i want to make sure that it was uh how it was behaving at a short range especially with the scope i sighted in aimed right dead center and the Tacticam gives me a good replay to find out that I squeezed off a good shot and I found out it was about three or four inches low at 20 yards, which makes sense because the scope is mounted three inches high and the bullet trajectory is still rising on the way to the target. So naturally, I wanted to make sure that I had a decent grouping, took another shot. And meanwhile, while I'm doing all this, Jeremy is continuing to keep the bait active. And uh, so that obviously the bear has food to come into. And the second shot was also about the same. And so this time on the third shot, I decided to aim three inches high to kind of get my mind wrapped around where I should aim when I shoot at a bear at a short range. And turns out I was maybe about an inch high, which means that I had to aim about two inches high of where I wanted to be to be spot on. So big thanks to Jeremy and also to Natchez, the sponsor for this video, because I was actually able to order a tree stand, tree steps, have them delivered out to Jeremy, who lives near the bears. So he was a facilitator for this hunt, obviously with the intention of sharing the spoils of the meat. So I sent him out with the equipment and he was to set up the at least the steps and then leave the tree stand near the base of the tree so that when I came in to hunt the first day, I could just put it up in the tree and go. Stands are from Natchez. This is a sponsor of the Wooded Beardsman's channel. The Boss XL. There are some uh, steps. So these two items are light enough that you could definitely carry them in. The stand itself weighs 23 pounds and these guys weigh 0.6 pounds per 30 inches, so almost a meter. So with a good backpack, you can carry them in. Um, this stand is a one kilometer walk normally for me. And uh, so I decided to uh, bring these out with the ATV, make things a little bit easier. And I also wanted to test the trail because when we do get a bear, uh, obviously I don't want to carry it out a kilometer. I just wanted to make sure that I can get the ATV in here uh, for, for easy retrieval. So I don't want to talk too much about how this morning played out. I want to play it out more organically, how I experienced it that morning. But suffice it to say, I didn't have all the intel that you guys have. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of trail camera data. We didn't know when that bear was coming in. And so I figured I was coming in about, you know, just a little bit afternoon. I was going to set up the tree stand. If I did it quietly enough, I was going to hunt there till night. Well, it turns out, as you could see from the trail camera, this is playing at the exact same rate that uh, it's happening in real time. So I've got real time action footage from the camera showing that there is actually a bear there. So I'm walking in and I should tell you that my gun is not loaded because as I said, my plan was to pick up the tree stand that Jeremy had cached in the forest for me and set it up. So go in it with that in mind.
So just making this corner, I realize there is a black smudge and it's moving and it's at the bait and my gun is not loaded. So now I have a decision to make. Either I'm going to back out or I'm going to try to hunt this bear. So the question is, what would you guys do besides do a dookie in your drawers? Mind you, I wasn't actually scared, but I think you guys would be if you saw this. So my choice naturally follows. If I'm there, I'm hunting. And yes, I learned from my mistake. Next time, 100% of the time, when I go into the bear stand, I will be loaded and I will be ready to hunt. So in this case, I had no choice but to rummage through my pack to try to find my ammo. So I had successfully snuck up on this bear. So find out now if I was actually able to take it. Be mindful now, I have to dig through my pack to find my ammo and continue the rest of the stock. So obviously by this point in time, you realize that I scared the bear off. Probably no major damage caused. However, again, I'm facing the dilemma. Is if I die, did I ruin the bait? Um, am I still setting up this tree stand? 
or am I going to back out for the day and set up another bait altogether? I don't know what I'm doing. My head is kind of spinning at this point in time, but I'm there to set up the tree stand anyway. That was my plan, so I'm gonna carry it out. Little did I know this uh, tree stand, um, well-built tree stand, so thanks Natchez for sending it, super light, um, super well-built, uh, was not put together. It came in a box and I wrongfully thought, assumed, that it would just be able to pull it out so jeremy knew this but he didn't tell me this so i'm sure he didn't plan on me sitting at the base of the tree to put the tree stand together to hunt it the same day but that's how it turned out so here i am in the forest floor and i know that there's a bear nearby let's say within a couple of hundred meters because i just scared it away so i'm terrified now not because i'm in the forest with bears you're always in the forest with bears but that my mind is focused on reading directions on how to put a tree stand together in the forest with bears all around me so <laughs> this is an interesting experience this is the probably the most terrified i've ever been of bears but mostly it's because i'm not making noise i'm trying not to be super loud while i'm putting the tree stand together because i don't want to bust the bears to smithereens out of this location and i'm concentrating with my head down and then, so as it turns out, after I get the tree stand all put together, well, mostly put together, at least the parts where they need to be, I realized that you actually need a wrench or two wrenches to be able to put this tree stands together. So now I'm wondering what the heck I'm doing with my life because I'm setting up a tree stand that I can't set up because the bolts aren't tightened. So anyway, I get the last tree step up on the tree, so at least I can climb up there. And then I have to go all the way back to Jeremy's house to grab and borrow a wrench and all the way back, so that's like another hour, two kilometers of walking all the way there, all the way back. So now I'm wondering, what the heck am I really doing with my life? Because I've already put on four kilometers uh, with the pack, carried the all my, inf um, all my stuff in and out. And so now at least I'm gonna complete the job. I've pretty much busted out the stand by the end of the day, right, coming in, coming out. And then I gotta use the saw because once I get up there, I realize that not everything's perfect. I wanna show you like a really cool way to set up a tree stand if you're by yourself using these uh, tree steps. So if you notice a tree step is aimed upwards, it's like backwards, like normally you put your foot on it the other way. But I use it as a, a way to hoist up the tree stand. So this is a really good way to do it on your own. And then I put a loop at the top of the tree stand uh, connected to the rope. So once I get it up, I can actually fling it over top of the tree step and then it's going to go all the way down to the bottom and it's important to do it this way because obviously you want to be able to unscrew that tree step when you're done or otherwise it's going to be pushed into your back and then once you've got it and you want the tree step to be facing the direction you want the tree stand to be so i've picked out a, a quartering toward shot where i can be on a slight angle toward it and then once i got that done i can tighten the strap and then remove the tree step and then after that i just got to make a whole pile of noises getting rid of the branches and i've got a tree next to me which is really handy because i'm able to actually cut the branches off a little bit long so i have room for packs and things like that and then i use the same technique for the camera arm so it was a quite a bit of work that goes into filming this for you guys uh, i know you appreciate it if you've watched it this long and i do appreciate it if you watch it the whole entire way but uh, getting all the cameras set up and then of course I realized once I get all this done that my shoot window is no good anymore. So I cut a, a tree here and I try to knock the branches down. And guess what? Well, the branches aren't cooperating with me and they're not breaking. So then I got to realize now I've got to make some noise next time I hunt because I've got to cut these branches off to be able to have a shooting window. So I make a plan that probably I'm not going to hunt the rest of today. I'll let things settle down. I'll go regroup to Jeremy and give him a little bit of grief to let him know like, hey dude, there's no tools for this tree stand. And I thought the tree stand was put together. Anyway, uh, no harm, no foul, the hunt shall go on. I replace the camera with one that can take better pictures and get some better intel. And here we are. So as I said, I wasn't really sure if the bears were gonna come in after dark or the end of the day or whatever. I would have been sitting a long time, to tell you the truth because they didn't actually come in until 7, uh, 7 40 p.m. This is still shooting light. The light in the background is actually the other uh, Browning trail camera. It's not an actual flashlight or anything like that. But I wanted to show you, like these bears are pretty hungry and they're, they know that there's food there. And I want to show, bring you through a little bit of a sequence here. Obviously the bear's doing their thing, but I'm gonna quiet down in a second or two because I want to show you an interesting interaction I got between the cub and the mother. And uh, 
the uh, cub gets a little bit frustrated but not getting able to get the food and uh, the mother has an interesting reaction so just listen So the cub is obviously really frustrated here and wants the mother to help. And the mother is taking a like a wait and see approach. <laughs> and the cub just takes it out on its mom. It's like, come on, give me some dang food. And then of course the cub uh, makes use of the bottom here. <laughs> Licking the holes from the bottom so now you know what a cub sounds like if you ever get woken up by a really weird sound in the middle of the night <laughs> it could just be a cub crying its mom for help and this is the reverse angle Again, it's kind of interesting just how it plays out. Like the mom comes back, wanders around, are you fine? Like what's the problem? And then wanders away and goes to look for alternate food. And I have a sequence montage I'll show you after where there's just a, like a ton of activity, a flurry of activity over the night. And it's interesting the times that the bears come in to eat and the spacing. So obviously they're off doing other things and they're not just relying completely on the barrel for their food. They're going to visit other food sources, natural food sources, like the pin cherries, the choke cherries are in right now, the raspberries, blueberries, if they're lucky enough, and uh, all kinds of other wild edibles, insects, and plants, and everything they can find right now. They're just packing on for the winter. So without this bait being set up here, we wouldn't see these types of interactions. We wouldn't be able to learn about bear behavior like we are right now. And here, watch this. This is a cool angle as well, and you get the audio really good here too. And the mom's just like, what's up, dude? I'm out of here. You're going to be like that. You're going to be a bit of a goofball. I've had enough. Get this food on your own. You can manage. And here's the full sequence. Obviously, it starts at about 7.45 p.m. right at uh, sunset. And uh, goes on for at least a few hours through till uh, 8, 9 p.m. or so. So the bears are really getting their fill. And then they, they come back, well, five hours later, about 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and they do another feed. So near as I can tell, they're kind of approaching this bait every five hours on a, a bit of a cycle. So they're going off to digest, and then they're coming back. And I'll show you the same thing in the reverse angle here as well. This camera's a little bit clearer because it didn't have condensation on. Both have produced really good, clear images. The Brownings do. It's just this one, uh, because I had cleaned it, it wasn't as uh, frosted. But you can see, same thing, flurry of activity up and down. And I'll tell you, by the end, this cub really figures out how to get food out of the barrel. Actually is able to crawl up from the front and more or less get inside the barrel and get its food. So uh, at first, the bears weren't able to get the food all the way to the back. And by the end, the cub was able to. So wanting to keep quiet, I didn't do a lot of narration while I was doing this setup. It's obviously the next day and coming out and getting ready for a hunt. And I obviously want to do everything as quietly as possible. So I'm kind of sneaking in here. And this is my normal stand routine. I do this for deer hunting as well. Just get everything situated, set up the camera on the camera arm. So that way you guys get a pretty good shot of the front of the barrel. And then of course from yesterday setting up the stand, I realized that I needed to prune a lot of the branches that were blocking my view and so I had to bring the pole saw in. Now these disturbances would not be 100% natural in the area but natural as far as what the bears would be accustomed to us coming in to bait and then doing a little bit of noise and maintenance every time we were there would be pretty normal for the bears to have experienced. And then uh, I did this in a pretty specific sequence. I made sure that I trimmed the branches first before setting any bait out and then once all that was done i always added and brought in new bait so this is what made all the work because every time i came in i was bringing you know 20 or 30 pounds of just discarded freezer foods and expired pantry foods that i could find from just about anybody my mom my sister my brother and of course us 
And then of course making a mask too, just dumping it everywhere and getting the scents to waft. This is some dry cereal bits and some expired hot chocolate mix and also some popcorn that uh, my mom helped me pop. And then whatever expired foods were in the freezer for just a little bit too long. I, I was sure I would made a stink bait every time. So this would be rotting in a bag for two or three days beforehand just to get a strong scent. And then after that, really just kind of settling in for the day. I went out extra early this time because, um, you know, seeing that the bears were there from, you know, early morning right until evening. Of course, I didn't want to go in in the dark and sneak in and bump bears off the stand again. So I was in the stand by about 10, 10 a.m. or so, and I had planned to sit all the way until dark this time because I knew that the bears were coming in at all hours of the day and also very early in the morning, which I couldn't hunt, and also very late in the evening, so after dinner. So once I got all settled in, it was just a matter of making sure that everything was working properly. I have my Tacticam rigged up on my 270, had a good view of the bait. And then after that, when you're settling in to hunt, what I do is, because you can't see the bears coming from a long distance, try to predict which direction they were kind of come from. And then from just looking at the trail cameras, I kind of realized that they were gonna come from the left, uh, my left, to the right. It seemed that way, but also there was a chance that they could come from behind me uh, to my left hand quartering behind and also down the trail that we had made from our right. So I really had no idea where the bears were going to come from. This muddy tree stand by Natchez was really comfortable. It has a mesh top, so there was not any pressure points. So I found I could sit for long periods of time and I was always rotate from sitting to standing. So moving into 5.30, I realized that we we're gonna get some weather here and they were calling and predicting for very heavy showers and thunderstorms. So I didn't wanna sit on the bait and shoot a bear after a rainstorm. And so at about 5.30 or so, I called it quits. I went and checked the bait one more time, make sure that the camera was working properly and uh, called it a day so that I would return for another full day sit next day. Sure enough, a couple hours later, the bears arrived right on cue. And this isn't after dark, this is actually the last hour of shooting light, but since it's very stormy and rainy, the, uh, light, the light conditions are quite low. And so we have the sow and the cub coming in to bait, even though it's a massive rain pour, downpour here. So it's actually a good thing I wasn't sitting on the stain because I don't know if I could justify shooting a bear, uh, which typically produce very weak blood trails and hard to find in a rainstorm, the blood trail will be washed away. So it'd be, it'd be pretty blind search for a bear tracking. So I thought since I had the whole week dedicated to this hunt, I would wait it out and uh, come back the next day. And as you can see, the bears fed quite heavily that night, pretty much polishing off everything that I had left there from, you know, 7.45 to 9.30 in their typical four to five hour pattern, leaving and then returning into uh, 3 a.m. here and then you know, funny enough, they're back here at 7.20 a.m. 
And so when I came back in the tree stand the next morning, I'd realized that they had eat, eaten pretty heavily over the night. So I wasn't really sure if I was going to see them early in the day, but I was hoping that I would slip in early enough. I'd see them, you know, about noon and have a good chance at a, at a bear before too late and before low light. Cause I didn't really want to be in the tree stand after dark. So of course now I'm back in, doing the same routine all over again, adding my stink bait. Yep, smells pretty bad. And uh, conveniently enough, there's always some moss around that can dampen that scent. But just a matter of polishing up. So I had popped some popcorn uh, with my mom the night before and uh, fill up the barrel as well as add some more. Uh, I put some beaver caster out there just to kind of spruce things up and give them a new scent, new, new incentive to come in. And so I was settled in to hunt about 10.47 a.m. was my final first sit. And it turned out to be uh, quite a long day, but uh, it was very relaxing. So I'm going to quiet up right now and I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of the hunt here without much commentary. And I'll let you guys kind of fill in the blanks as to what happened, but I'll do a recap after. But uh, let me tell you, it was pretty darn exciting. Of course after sitting for the entire day any activity would be exciting and it was cold too so here we are let's get going
So I got a chance to watch the sow and cub for about 45 minutes. Most of the time, the, the cub was on the bait, but the sow was actually pacing back and forth in the woods doing her own thing. She never committed to the bait because I think she knew something was up. She knew that I was around. And then she alerted the cub, the cub took off. And then sometime later, another sow and cub show up and the cub goes immediately into the bait and then the sow does her own thing. And so I got a chance to watch a second pair and uh, this one was kind of interesting too. Got a pretty good feed. So my guess is that we were getting all the camera activity was not just uh, the same sow and cub. It's obviously a pair. And so likely sisters. And they tolerated each other. But I wasn't interested in shooting a sow. I really wanted to shoot a lone uh, boar if I could. Or a lone sow, a dry sow. Uh, regardless, a bear that was by itself. So... I didn't want to shoot any bear unless it committed to the bait and so that was kind of my rule and I did want to get a good clean shot and you can see this is a good mixture here with the trail cam footage of you know what the sow is doing while the, the cub is on on the bait and I actually was able to sequence this more or less as it occurred and then uh, I did get my sights on the sow a few times but I elected not to shoot any of these shots are doable shots even with the rifle. And then after some time, this sow alerts the cub to take off. And, you know, presumably there's another bigger bear in the picture. And so now watch what happens. A lone bear coming into the bait.
Normally get buck fever. I can't, can't even hold the camera straight. My <sighs> eyes. It's cold, cold plus adrenaline. That will make me shake every time. I just reviewed reviewed the footage. I think I got a good shot. Um, bear went that way and then a pause for a little bit and then I think I heard something collapse I, I don't know how many bears were there there was at least two there was a couple of bears going back and forth there's a couple there was a bear going back and forth and it would never come in. And then finally it called the cub. The cub took off. And then two more bears took off oh, out in front of me. And I thought the hunt was over and I was just about to pack it. And I'm gonna get out now because I got... It's a weird sound. I'm freaking out now how many bears are back in here. That uh, I don't really want to be getting out of this tree with all the bears around here. And I gotta go. Oh, I can't stop shaking. I gotta go get Jeremy. He's gonna help me search. It's a wolf. Wolf calling over here now. I don't know if you guys are. Turn the tactic cam off. Okay, I gotta. I don't wanna be out here past dark by myself. So I'm gonna pack everything up and uh, go grab Jeremy. I'll see you guys in a bit. Uh. Yo! Good. Yeah, come here. Quick, it's gonna roll. I'm not gonna say 100% that there's a bear down on the ground, but come look. Uh, here I am with no shirt on. Yeah, yeah it's authentic. Yep. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> I'll replay it one more time. Okay, for well, you. let me put a shirt on. Okay, you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna go. Okay. We're gonna go pick up a bear. I was doubting myself, and I'm like, oh, I just watch it three times. I'm like, because you know, it was all about. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's not right. a heart shot, but I think it's a lung shot. It's close, eh? But we'll know. Yeah. Well, let me suit up. Let's get out there before it's too dark. It's definitely hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, what'd you put in today? Ten hours sitting up there. Yeah, twenty hours in two days. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hours. So. Right. Off. I th I swear there was four bears there, man. Oh yeah. Yeah, it just it was a circus. That was the second time they came by. But there was de there were deer. There was bear going back and forth the whole time. Okay. Like crisscrossing, and then the first two didn't want to come in, and then uh, scared them all off, and then ran away, and then they came back. I'm always like ready to pack in. I'm like they're not gonna come back. They spooked them. Yeah. And then they came. They all they came, right they came back out right about. Uh, like at five, they were out, and then this was about 6.30ish. All right, a couple of pumpkins. Yep. Just gotta go grab the uh, trailer, and then we're gonna head over. Head back to the scene of the crime. Now once we get this trailer going, we'll rock over, and Jerry can share some of his knowledge. Pretty handy to have all these tools here, eh? Makes, Trailer. Makes a big difference. Oh, you're gonna load the ATV as well?
You see it still? It's my uh, GoPro running still. Uh, yep, yeah, red lights on. So, this is where it was when I shot it. It's, that's blood there. Yeah, right here too. Right there. Yep. That's lung blood. That's, that's lung blood. Yeah, Pretty lung frothy. lung blood for sure. That spot there. No. Yep. Lots right here. Here, here, and there through the brush because there's some on the ranch here. Yeah. You see any pass there? Oh yeah, right here, Jer, on your left side. Oh, look it up here. Yeah. There's lots of blood on this. I'm on a bear trail here, but I don't see anything. Yeah, okay. Oh, we're in here lots. Are you a deer? Over here, some lung blood. Over here, up on the leaves, on the ground here. Right here, some. And way up where my beam is there too. Lung blood under my foot. See where the beam is? Yeah. Right there. Big oh, one. look at that one. <laughs> That's, that's your bear? No, that's a log. Over here. Lots here now. Oh, oh, right oh, there. oh, right there. Hey, bear. <laughs> I was all right, eh? Yeah. Done deal. Hey bear, wake up. Not waking up, bear. But uh, we were talking about where placement should be and you saw you thought maybe more close to the shoulder and then I said I did a bunch of research. Yeah. And I did center body, center center. Yeah. And that's what that's what we were told. That's what I was told anyway. And then you avoid the muscle, the meat, and uh if you're shooting an arrow, you're not getting it into the uh yeah. shoulder. <laughs> You get sketchy. You get sketchy. <laughs> you think this is where they were hanging out? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, it's pretty thick. Close. It's pretty thick in here. Uh, Drag it by the front. Bike. Oh, I forget how awkward these are. It's not like a deer. Where's the antlers? Yeah. And we want to pull it. Well, I got to get a good picture somehow too. Why is it so heavy? Because her foot's under the log. <laughs> Weird. Pull what? that foot out. So people are gonna want to know the weight. So what do you think is the weight on this side? Oh, I don't know. Uh, buck 20? Buck 30? Buck 40? Probably, it's, they're solid, right? It's got to be a, at least me and I'm 140. So let's say 170, 180. Yeah. I think the, every once in a while you have to kind of stop and make sure it's not caught on something. Yeah. So the young bull just goes over everything. Yeah. <laughs> the old bull moves stuff because it's actually easier to move it than to go over it. They have this thing at the store, it's pre-wrapped meat. Pre-wrapped meat? Yeah. It's, it's pre-wrapped. Oh. You just you just like you just go in and you grab it. Yeah. Would you want to get a 500 pounder? No. <laughs> this Not is good. hunting for trophies, right? So Oh well, this one's gonna taste better too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Try and go wide around that bit. How's that fur holding up? It's uh the trail smooth. Yeah. It's my pre pre smooth trail. Oh you rolled it earlier. <laughs> this is how you sneak up on a bear. It's a nice smooth trail with no sticks on it. Yeah. It's a little bird of work, eh? I smell dookie. Yeah, I'm gonna lock it off here in a second. My knife is really not sharp. You want some moss? You got some moss. I got some moss. <laughs> you want me to go from the front and just start cutting? How's it going? You still in the dookie? Well, this part's always the slowest part, right? If you're gonna do this right. If you don't want dookie in your meat, yeah. So, job done? Yeah, just about. What did you save? The heart and some yeah. call fat? Yeah. 
And then uh, are you going to put a video up on your channel of uh, the gutting and the skinning and butchering? Sounds like a members only thing. Oh, you're not going to put it up? Get demonetized. Well, you did not before. Yeah, it wasn't really the gutting part though, right? So oh, just, just all the cleaning. Well, and you the... can do the other stuff then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we can do butchering. I'll do butchering on my channel and then we'll, uh, that'll be a wrap on this season. All right, you can't really see me, but I'm here. It's a lot easier to do with two people. <laughs> the dragging, the skinning, we're going to bring it back to uh, Jer's uh, parents' place and we're going to hang it up. And then we're going to have a piece of meat that I get to eat. A little bit more. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, guys, we're, we're well on our way to getting some meat. We're just using uh, Jeremy's family farm. So we've got the bear mostly done up. R wear rubber gloves at any time you handle uh, bear meat, or especially because obviously they they eat whatever they can find so they can carry parasites. So I'll pick these up at Princess Auto. They're just regular nitrile, I think that's what they're called, right, Jerry? Yep, nitrile gloves. Nitrile gloves. Nice and fat, and uh, we are in the sun, but it's uh, cool enough we can handle it. We're just going to quarter it up, and then we're going to move it off into the shed here in the back in the shade. And uh, Jeremy's going to take a majority of it. I'm going to grab a couple bags, maybe, and I want to do some like burgers or something like that, maybe a steak I'll throw in, just to kind of wrap up this video and let you guys know what I think of bear meat. Um, it is obviously one of the better kinds of meat. Is that the bullet? Dude. No way. It lodged in the yeah. shoulder. That's pretty sweet. Check that out. <laughs> huh. Look at that. Doll my knife. <laughs> you could see it or not, but maybe if I put my face in at the same time, you can get the focus right. Right in the elbow. Right in the, the far side elbow. Look at the mushrooming on that. That's kind of cool. Neat. <laughs> there you go. It's, uh, it, you know, it only went 40 yards. So <laughs> put a pretty good hurt on it. And uh, we had no problems tracking it, obviously. So, all good. What's my recipe? Yeah, what did you make this with? Bear meat. And what So else? this is bear meat that has bones in it. And uh, Did you put ketchup on the top there? I did. <laughs> what? I didn't have barbecue sauce. Uh, so what I did is I boiled the ribs for a couple hours. So they're already cooked. And yeah. then we're going to brown them. I put ketchup, but do you know what else I put in there? Uh, I'll give you one guess. Wadobo. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm almost out and I can't get it in Canada. Yeah, brutal. Maybe you guys can empathize with me and the inability to get Wadobo outside of the United States. I know I can. Um, no, I don't know what to put on there. Salt and pepper. <laughs> nope. Well, some salt. Maple syrup. Oh, beauty. Yeah. Maple syrup and ketchup. Yeah. Totally doing the bear justice. Yeah. Halfway. The bear loves ketchup <laughs> and maple syrup. So that's it, eh? Just boiled and braised. Yeah, yeah. We just want to like brown it up, bubble it up a bit. How do you like your bare ribs? How do I like them? <laughs> I don't know. Just ribby. Ribby. Yeah. These ones are going to be pretty ribby, I think. I'm interested to uh, see what they taste like as far as the fat goes, and should be good, right? <clears throat> yep, yeah, I think so. I think bear ribs are a little bit overlooked, but they do have a lot of meat on them. Like initially they just look like they're all fat, but I feel like slow cooking ribs is not a great way to cook wild ribs. And especially with venison ribs, like I like bear fat. I don't like venison fat and most people don't. So we boil it. And then the fat mostly comes out and raises to the top of your liquid. You pour it off, the fat's gone. And then you're gonna finish cooking those ribs in whatever your preferred method is. In this case, it's ketchup and maple syrup and the barbecue. Have you ever eaten venison ribs before? I have. Did you like them? Well, because I boiled them and got the fat out <laughs> right. of them and then seasoned them, yeah. I, I did like them. Yeah, because they're wa the waxy yeah. business. Yeah. But it's probably a fair amount of work to boil them to get the f enough of the fat off that you could make it worth eating. Like just like two, just, like three changes of water kind of thing. It just takes time. Yeah, it takes. Time. Oh, you don't have to change the water. No, you just have to like simmer. No, them. Just, you can do it in I'm, slow. I'm joking. Too, but. I'm talking like a like a make a an unpalatable food palatable. <laughs> just like three changes of water to get yeah, all yeah. the yeah, stuff yeah. out. But yeah, the waxiness of the ribs makes it like it's even like questionable whether you could take all the rib 
meat out and put it in the sausage. You probably could. I've done that before too. Right, and then maybe it gets hot enough that it's not the wax. <clears> and I've also and cut it with other fat and read somebody on the line, and they basically like sliced out the little bits of meat between the ribs, and then they made venison jerky out of it, and they were talking <laughs> about how great it was and like <laughs> really ambitious no, there. Nothing with venison fat in it is good. Well, then you don't mind this. Yeah, yeah. Well, that never goes away. Yeah. That was perfect. Good oh, job. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Are you going uh, to make everybody taste it? Uh, if they want to. Okay. Your cousin's going to have it? Hello, sure. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> Honest, Honest opinion? Yeah. You're going to get me eating this on there. You've never had... Never, hot. no. Okay. It's very hot. So when you're going to compare it to, obviously, like, pork ribs, or uh, pork or beef ribs. Would you say it's more like porcupine or more like groundhog? <laughs> <laughs> <Brat. laughs> it's you definitely like pork. Porky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to give it a rating on a scale of one to ten? Well, it's hard because any rib I've ever eaten is very marinated, yeah. but this does not taste gamey to me at all. And it was it was marinated in ketchup. <laughs> a little bit. A little no, bit of but like and usually a when you maple syrup. usually when you go, who that's hot when you go to the restaurant or wherever oh, when it's I make super them at saucy, home. Super saucy, right? Super saucy, so yeah. you don't taste the meat all that much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And it's not gamey. Wait, what's your name? My name is Etienne. Where are you from? I'm from Germany. And you're visiting Canada. Right, Canada for the first time. Yeah. And Eating bear, bear ribs. Bear for the first time? Yeah. We don't have any bears in Germany. You ate them so, all. So, yeah, we <laughs> ate them all. They were so tasty. So that's now why, why they're gone. And you have, uh, you have Instagram? What, right. Where do they find you? At Kyler Craft, so that's with two K, Kyler and Craft. I'll li I'll link it in the description. I'll make sure you give me the right link. Awesome, I will. What do you think about bear? Did you have a bite? Yeah, I did. I already had one. This is my second one. It's awesome. What do you think? At a scale of ten, uh, I'd give it a nine point, or let's say eight point five. Wow, yeah, it's that's, very good. That's pretty high. Yeah, it is. It's tasty. Good. Jeremy, are you impressed with your cooking? Yeah. It's a good bear? Yeah, I'll give it uh, 3.7. <laughs> it's no chicken wing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Terrible. It's good. It's just, I love bear meat. Yeah, you I know. ate three bears in the big wild year. Right? Yeah. Wow. So you're joking. Yeah, yeah. I like meat. You like and I don't like bear meat. <laughs> it's better than venison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, better than venison? Yeah, any deer meat I've ever had is dry. Yeah, it's really Yeah, sad. this is not dry at all. No. No, it's really good. There you go. Good. Well, I might even say better than a moose steak. Ooh, oh. there you go. Then yeah. we can sell oh, some you bear. were just speaking very highly of moose steak. We can sell, yeah. well, sell some bear calf, calf, right? Mm, calf moose, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. no, no. I like the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> more, I bet you if huh? you put more sauce on, you probably get it a 10. Just lots of sauce. No, it's just what I'm used to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I do. This is how I do. Okay. It's just messy. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna give it like a ten. Mm. It's really good. Uh oh, I'm in trouble now. Your beard's giving it a ten point five. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so fatty and moisturizing. That's a ten. That's a, that, and that was ketchup too. If it wasn't ketchup. It was like sweet baby Ray's. It'd be like eleven. I have that in the fridge. That's really good. So, guys. Go bear hunting. Forget mm -hmm. moose hunting, right? No moose hunting, no calf hunting. That's better than moose, in it's, my opinion. It's better than moose. In my opinion, yeah. No, oh, it's a 10. This yeah. is a 10. I well. got I to gotta put this camera down. <laughs> you guys check out uh, Natchez, sponsor for the video, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. So I would say if you were to serve this in a restaurant and put barbecue sauce on top, nobody would ever be able to tell the difference between irregular ribs. Maybe only the the bones would give it away because they, they're shaped differently, they're smaller. But apart from that, no big difference. It's really good. So it's restaurant approved. Quality. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, highly, yeah. highly rated all around. What's better than that? Duck. <laughs> no way, really? Duck is pretty good. You mm -hmm. like duck mm -hmm. better than that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Which one, like a, like a diver duck? I don't mind diver ducks. I don't mind the diver ducks either. A nice 
A nice uh, mallard? McGanser. Yeah, <laughs> a mallard. A mallard. Yeah, mallard. Yeah. I haven't had a mallard. We're not that good. Well, we better get one. We better get one. Then you'll know.